Uh, I believe I'm joined with Hybrid the Rapper. What's good, man? Yes, sir. What's up, Kenny? Hey, man. Long good. time no talk to you, man. Yeah, man. How's how's it going? Man, life's good, bro. Life's real good. Starting the 2024 off good. Yeah, that's that's good to hear, like man. Um, I'm doing all right. Just making it through the week, and uh, I'm just ready to see what uh, what January brings. So uh, I'm I'm excited. Man, I know you're on your grind, and you stay active. I see you all over the. <laughs> I see you in the most <laughs> random places. Yeah, I man. I see you in the little I mean, you would be leaned, leaned up on the wall. Yeah, man. I'm just uh, I'm I'm pretty active, so it's uh, pretty cool. Um, just you know, Jan I'm waiting for this cold weather to end, though. Like I'm I'm ready to end this cold weather, get to the warmer weather. And just get some warm weather out here already. So we got a few yeah. months before we get there. So um, we're getting there. Uh, but you are definitely one of the most versatile artists that I've ever known, that I've ever that I've seen perform in person. Um, you always stay busy musically, like you be having. Um, countless of material that you put out. Uh, I see that your first release of 2024 was uh, came out January 4th of this month. Uh, you're using again. Um, yeah, man. So, uh, so talk about this song, man. What made you decide to use this as your first release of uh, 2024? Yeah, man. I, I appreciate taking notice, and I appreciate the comp the compliments, man. And um, it means a lot to me because I know I throw a lot out there, and I'm, I don't think all my supporters and and audience he uh, hear or see everything. So you know, for you to have your for it to be on your radar, you know, what I'm saying, knowing that how much music you support, it means a lot. But yeah, man. I ended uh, ended 2023, man, with um several full projects you know the one with shooter mcgavin our house party album and then the duet with uh rise hendrix our thoroughbreds album and also did the came for love double album so like i i flooded um i just all this new music um of all sorts of different flavors and then i was like okay well i've done some duet albums a ton of collaboration i've done tons of love songs you know what i'm saying i've been releasing videos and all sorts of material all year and i was like how am i gonna get this next year started you know what i'm saying what what's something i haven't done in a while or maybe even ever but once what's, what's something the world needs what's something that my fans want to see me do like what's something that's just gonna hit differently after all that you know what i'm saying it's like do i take a break for a while or do i just raise the bar and and press the envelope a little bit more and so that's kind of what i decided to do and I uh, I used to make a lot of rap rock type music, you know, back in 07 and 08 and 09. And um, I kind of missed doing it. And so when I went to write that song, I wanted to revisit that type of uh, mixture of uh, rap and rock. I wanted to take it to like a little more tool and corn and a little bit more edgy kind of, of rap rock, not just the old Limp Biscuit kind of vibe, but I wanted to come with it a little bit more edgy and more new rock and um so not only did the sound have that edge and that that raw emotional feel but you know the instrumental and the way that it was mixed um by my homie pipes um but then also the visual that um looney films gave me i, I really wanted to like tackle the the issue of addiction you know what I'm saying? And I make a song not only that people can relate to or people understand, but that could also maybe affect people to the point where maybe it can actually help people a little bit. So the song has got a lot of edgy, raw emotions and storytelling really on purpose. You know, I felt like our town and our area and our state and the nation in general really needs some music to kind of shake people up emotionally. Um, 
because if it's music's ever going to be, you know, cause some, some personal change, it's going to have to hit them hard. You know what I'm saying? And there's plenty of like soft, heartfelt music out there, but I feel like maybe the world needs something that's a little more jolting and a little more shocking, you know what I'm saying? And actually forces them into a decision. And now that, that's what that song and visual, that's the intention behind it is not only just, I didn't want to just make another hot song. Or I didn't want to just make another a rap rock song just for stylistic purposes. I wanted to actually affect people, you know what I'm saying? And and when they listen to it and when they're done, you know, I'm like maybe it like helps them just like how church can help people or just like how counseling can help people or, or whatever, you know, a life-changing event, you know, can shake the reality up. I wanted this song to to maybe potentially do that, even if it's just one person, you know? Um, so that's why it, I kind of kicked in 2024 with uh, just something out of nowhere, you know, a, a real big curveball to my listeners and to the local music scene in general. Cause I feel like it's a topic that a lot of people avoid, you know, uh, maybe they don't want to be hypocritical or maybe they don't want to be too critical or they don't want to hurt feelings or, they don't even want to go there. You know what I'm saying? I felt like maybe as a writer, I need to challenge the audience and challenge myself and, and try to make something that's going to might hit people in a, in a hard way, you know? And, uh, and I think everybody that played their part in the video, um, I think everything really fit well, you know, um, Raven who started in the video did a really good job of playing the role of the, the person dealing with addiction and the way that um, pipes from Uncanny Minds did the mixes and really captured the emotional kind of vocals and stuff. And then of course, Lundy films doing the actual videography. I think it, that small little team that we, we came together and I think everybody did a really, really good job of portraying the message, you know? Yeah, absolutely, man. What I admire about you, over the course of your career for as long as I've been listening to your music and is you know, you it's the variety of substance that you bring uh musically. Um and it's like you never know what 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 you never know what how you're gonna get from hype the rapper. You know, I think that makes it very unique per se. Like, yeah, you do a rap album, you you, you go in with the bars with the punch lines things like that you have the love songs you got the heartbreak songs you got um passionate songs you got you know emotional songs like you you got you literally have got everything for everybody uh singing rapping no matter the context you have it and uh it resonates with people and, you know, you put a lot of emphasis in your project, especially a rap rock album type of, uh, project that you've been, that you've done with this project, this double disc album. Um, and you, um, you, you do a good job with that, man. You, and you also do well with the visuals as well. Um, put a lot of, uh, put the visual perspective out there and, uh, you know, addiction is is still a thing. It's you know, and you know that's mm -hmm. hip. What makes hip hop compelling is that you know it it people are not scared to speak on these type of issues per se. It's a lot of people willing to show um, that vulnerability side and uh, and, and say, hey man, things like this is happening in the real world, man. You should listen to it. You should hear what I'm saying, like. Music can help uh, help people through trying times. It can save lives as well. Uh, so seeing that you're doing this and seeing how much that rap rock uh, combination has meant so much to you um, at, at growing up and you, you seeing how it's been a huge influence to you over the course of your music career. Uh, it resonates, so um, I've, I've got a chance to hear this project. I've literally heard all your projects at this point. 
Um, yeah. and, and you just continue to amaze me with what you've been able to do. Like you, you stay busy musically and you yeah. always got something up your sleeve. So th this, this double project that you've done, um, it's, it's awesome, man. I'm definitely glad that you, um, released, uh, came to love, uh, this, so that's part one and that's part two, uh, came out yeah. last year. Um, not only is it available on the streaming platforms, but all of Hybris music is available on this Bandcamp page. I definitely want to yeah. spread the word on that, considering how much Bandcamp means to you and how much it means to independent artists that's out there. Um, mm -hmm. HybridTheRapper.Bandcamp.com You can download all the music there. And oh, by the way, especially on Bandcamp Friday, they still doing this. They've been yeah, doing this yeah. since 2020. We're in 2024. So this, how does, how does, what, how, let me ask you about Bandcamp in particular, because they still okay. doing this after all these years. You know, when independent artists, when we was all sitting at home wondering if mm -hmm. we was going to do live shows again and being public again, <laughs> and Bandcamp was the first to step up and say, hey, we're going to help out these independent artists. We're going to waive our fees and that all the Purchases 100% goes directly towards the artist, man. How's that? What's that like for you as an independent artist when a website, like a company, like Bandcamp is yeah. doing this and still doing this to this day? Yeah, they. I mean, they're so artist friendly. Um, I, I love Bandcamp. I really wish more people used it. I wish it was incorporated just as big as Spotify or iTunes or TikTok, you know, like, cause it's such a easy, clean, personalized page. It's, it's basically gives the artist a free website to put all their, their catalog on there and break it up into projects or singles. And there's all sorts of cool, like little options, you know, like where they can buy your discography at a discounted rate. Like that's so slick. You know what I'm saying? Like you can literally with the press of one button, buy an entire discography of an artist at like 75 percent off if the artist wants you know what i'm saying like you can it's got the fan club it's got the uh the free bonus albums that when they like if they join my fan club they immediately get like six or seven albums for free <laughs> you know like <laughs> just really cool cool features um and it's clean it looks good the audience can choose if they want MP3 or, or WAV files. Like, just it's like the perfect indie artist website. Honestly, it's free. You know, there's no monthly fee. You ain't got to worry about streaming numbers. Like, basically, they just keep the music. Like, old school digital downloads. You know, like I don't know what's better than that. Honestly, um, you don't. There's no commercials. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I wish more people used Bandcamp because I know it seems a little outdated because everybody's just hooked to these um, streaming services, but like if they would have had Bandcamp right at like the mid 2000s or whatever, right when we all first started, you know, formulating our projects and trying to build a little online presence, it would have been the, the pinnacle. You know, it would have been like the coolest thing ever because back then trying to create a website that had your music on it, that was uh, able to be purchased and all this stuff like that. It was, it was tricky, you know, it was hard. Like it sounded easy, but you know, it, you would have had to probably pay an arm and a leg, but yeah, I love Bandcamp, man. I got pretty much my whole catalog and history on there. You know, i I even got, um, and you don't have to worry about copyright issues either. Like, I have a, a a remix album on there that's like where I took famous beats, you know, and did remixes and stuff that you would you couldn't sell on a platform, you know what I'm saying? But I I had the whole little mixtape right there on Bandcamp um, for free, you know, where they can just download it and 
almost like an old school mixtape, you know, where it's just me jacking instrumental beats or uh, industry beats. So there's some other cool things about it because you don't really get flagged for copyrights on there. So you can pretty much sell whatever you want um, or give it away for free. And I like that option that uh, they have on there where they can download it for free, but they can still donate to you if they want to. So like fans can just gift, <laughs> gift you money. It's just pretty cool. And it's instantaneous. And also like, like when somebody buys an album on my band camp, um, I get an immediate email that tells me who did it. So I can thank them directly. You know, I'm like, Oh, dang, Kenny, I appreciate that, man. You know, like write to my email. That's awesome. So, yeah. I think, I think band camp is definitely slept on. I don't know as far as nationally, like all over the U S how many people are using it, but I don't think a lot of people in Kentucky are sadly. Um, but I do have a couple, I do got a handful of people that always purchase my stuff on Bandcamp. You, you know, they, you could tell they know when something's dropping and they always go get, you know, get an album there. And, uh, you could tell they probably prefer it over Spotify or, or well, you know, whatever. So, Oh yeah. Um, so the, uh, the first hybrid album that I got was Starseed, uh, so that was 2015. Uh, we're yeah. In 2024. <laughs> so that is how long I've known Hybrid. And um, I said this on air numerous times. I said this in public. I said this um, on a lot of places. You and another local act are the main reason that I started listening to local music. Um, I've always been in tune with independent music, listening to artists outside of Kentucky. But when I started, you know, finding out about your work and I started listening to your music and now it feels like I'm listening to everybody these days. Yeah. It feels like I'm pretty much everybody in central Kentucky, Louisville, in other areas um so that's pretty cool um so yeah and i love that yeah you can literally buy every single person's project like uh, like a few clicks and you can just like that man so and of course you can subscribe to hybrid's page and they will give you an email of when he releases music, whether it's a single mm-hmm. or whether it's an album, mixtape, whatever the case may be, he uh, he got he get you covered. Now I want to chat with you about this uh, this project you did. You did a couple of collaboration projects, and one of yeah. them was with your longtime friend uh, Rise Hendrix. Um, yeah. who is a fellow Kentucky State graduate. Um, mm-hmm. y'all, join, y'all have collaborated on n- numerous occasions, and y'all went back at it with Thoroughbreds, which obviously that's yeah. the, uh, that's the, uh, that's the name. That's the thing. Kentucky State, that's the mascot name uh, for yeah, the sports yeah. teams. So what was it like to link up with Wise Hendrix? for this thoroughbreds ep what was it like we connected with him yeah man i i was uh you know of course since um since back when we first met around oh five oh six um a lot's changed he's he's basically gotten famous online you know he really has um every time i see his success on there through TikTok and instagram and facebook i'm just blown away you know what i'm saying because he's he's got as many followers as is the famous actors and artists, you know what I'm saying? Like he's up there in the multiple, multiple millions. And I think that what's cool about it to me is, you know, I'm, I'm a real sentimental man, sentimental person and, and artist. And I just remember everybody I've ever collabed with. I, I'm always reminiscing. I'm always flashing back. I'm always watching old videos and home, home videos and stuff. And, you know, I've got videos of me and Raz performing together <laughs> at local bars in Frankfurt, you know, just having a time of our life. You know what I'm saying? I can remember 
recording his first album for him. You know, when I first met him just on campus at an open mic, you know, and like, I, I remember it like it was yesterday, you know what I'm saying? Like, seems a whole life ago, but when I start digging in the past, you know, it just all comes flooding back and to see it all come full circle to know that he's, you know, all the way up in New York and he's achieved this level of success. And for him to just reconnect with me, no questions asked and, and make new music with me. And not only that, but push it, you know, and tell all his new fans about me and our history. It was just a real, a really cool moment not only to just make some new bangers with them like old times, but just to see that even though we're on two different levels and he's operating with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of fans that he would still look out for me and still put on for me, you know what I'm saying? And still tell all his fans like, look, this is my homie Hyber. This is what we just did. Y'all need to check this out. Check out my boy Hyber. You know, like I, I ain't really had that kind of life. You know what I'm saying? Like, music's full of like who you know and and being part of a fraternity and people co-signing for you and you know this person introducing you to this person and and I've always just been like really really underground you know like super small town low budget just scraping you know and for him to vouch for me on on that level and 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 do that album with me and do the music video with me and, and, you know, hopefully who knows what in March he's coming to Louisville, you know what I'm saying? He's going to have me rock stays with him. And so we might still be doing more, you know, so who knows what's really going to come from it, but just cool to see that even though after all these years, damn near almost 20 years pass that he could still just put on for me and, and, and not forget about me basically. Um, so it really meant a lot on multiple levels and we rep for the college, you know, we rep for our origin, how we met, you know, like I know there's people still around me and in my town that remember when, when rise used to just open up for my old rap group. Cause that's how it all started. You know, I was in a rap group called basement upstairs and I recorded rise's album for him. Cause I met him on campus as a student. And next thing you know, he was our opening act. So here it is now. He got eight, nine million followers and fans. And, you know, that that group I was in isn't even together anymore. You know what I'm saying? So for him to still remember me and to still keep in touch with me over these years, you know what I'm saying? And it just means a lot to me. You know, it just shows me that some things come full circle and some things were just meant to be even even a long time ago when I didn't even really know it. You know, things were in the works and the universe was maneuvering things to, to happen. And um, so to me, it really, it was a big moment in my career just because I'm like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Here it is. I had an old school homie that has really gotten famous and blown up and he still connects with me. Like no time has passed. You know what I'm saying? Even, even hundreds and hundreds of miles away. And uh, so that thoroughbreds album was really sentimental to me um, on multiple levels, you know, and uh, plus it did good. It was really successful, you know what I'm saying? Because all of a sudden, here it is. I've dropped this album and I'm on here with this guy who has like all these different fans that they don't know nothing about me, you know? So all of a sudden it's getting thousands and thousands of plays and it's all new new listeners to me, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm used to just having the same few hundreds or thousands of listeners, you know what I'm saying? But then all of a sudden here it is. I wake up one day and I got totally new audience just because his name's on it, you know, and that was, that was pretty awesome. You know what I'm saying? I really felt like some progress was made and I got some exposure through him that was pretty much like a blessing, you know, because he didn't have to do that. You know, he, he ain't got, he ain't got to run around here shouting my name <laughs> to all his fans. You know what I'm saying? They don't know me. So it was pretty cool of him. Um, not only to do that album, but to really promote it and continue to promote it, you know? Yeah, that, that tells yeah, that was, you how much of a real one he is. Like, never forget yeah. the people that was there early in his career from Kentucky State. Yeah. And now he's in Buffalo, New York, and having becoming a social media sensation. And I'm pretty <laughs> sure 
a lot of folks have run into his um his content, the weird bars videos mm-hmm. that he be doing. And he's now releasing albums named after the Weird Bar series. <laughs> he even got a Christmas yeah. album. Uh yeah. Weird Bar. So he is magnificent at what he does. And I'm glad you that you brought up yeah, he is about to hit the road. Uh, and he will be in Louisville in March. So I may have to make the trip. I've never met Wise in person. I've interviewed him before, but I've never, I've never met him in person. So I might, I might have to make yeah. my way to Louisville that night in March and go see him. Uh, and it's sure. crazy too because um, he he actually came into town about. Maybe five years ago, I did a hustle and flow in Lawrenceburg, um, and you've been to the, that place in yeah. Lawrenceburg, I know, um, that Bourbon on Main place. Uh, but he actually came to one of those, and it was real. It was right before TikTok, so he still hadn't um, he still hadn't taken off to that point. But he did travel down for a weekend. We did a song together. We did a show together. But it wasn't that long ago. Um, but it just shows how fast. Things can happen because as soon as he got on the TikTok wave, uh, everything changed. Uh, his whole life changed. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure if it's going to be March or April, but I know Louisville's definitely on one of his spots. And uh, we've already talked about, you know, me being involved in that show. I'm hoping I can spend a little more time at some point with him so we can shoot some mu- music videos and content. So we had a lot more plans to uh, – build on the album and, and, you know, create some stuff to back the album up. And we just hadn't been able to because of scheduling and, and distance, but I'm not going to count it out yet, you know, cause I know we're, we're still working on some new songs too. And I still got a couple of remixes with him from uh, some of the material off the album. So I, I got, um, I still got some more songs coming with him. Um, actually I'm dropping a solo album in May. Um, and there's going to be a track on there with him. And um, so we'll see, man. I'm hoping we could just keep it going. Uh, but yeah, definitely my hat goes off to him for him, his success, and, and just our whole history, man, because our history is deep and, and extensive. And the memories that we made and the music that we made has just been priceless. So I'm happy to for any of my friends to have success. Uh, but I, he he's definitely earned it. He works hard as hell. Like on, he's always been a a, a liberal artist. You know, he's always drawn and drawn. You know, he's been a uh, like a writer, a performer, an actor. He just always had multiple talents. You know, what I'm saying like obviously the the comedy. So how I am with music, he's that same type of way. You know, what I'm saying he just he can do multiple multiple facets you know so him getting a hold of a a platform like tiktok only made sense because he's he's always got the the performing skills and the articulation and the writing and the hip-hop backbone and the fashion you know just got all all of it he's uh just a well-rounded artist in general yeah absolutely um so check out thoroughbreds from hybrid to rapper Wise Hendrix available on all the streaming platforms and at hybridtherapper.bandcamp.com. He's got a new album in the, on the way in May. Be on the lookout for March or April for Wise Hendrix. He'll be headed to Louisville for so keep an eye on him, Wise Hendrix, at uh, Instagram and for Facebook for more details on his upcoming tour. Great chatting with you, Hybrid. Uh, congrats on in another uh, an incredible year for 2023. I look forward to seeing what you have on the horizon for 2024. I appreciate your time, man. Thanks again. Man, I appreciate you, Kenny. Good luck at the Lexington Music Awards. I've seen where you're nominated again. I know you're going to take home the crown, and you've definitely earned it because, like I said, I say it every time I see it. Like, man, you're the the number one music supporter around Kentucky that I know of. And, uh, yeah, man, you deserve it, bro. And I, I hope good year for you as well. Hearing that for you, man, definitely means a lot, man. So thank you for that. You have a good night.
Ah, uh, you too, bro.